Welcome to Hull and Estate and Succession Planning, a series of podcasts hosted by Ian Hull and Susanna Popovic Montag that will provide information and insights into estate planning in Canada. From the offices of Hull and Hull in Toronto, here are Ian and Susanna. Hi, and welcome to Hull and Estate and Succession Planning. You're listening, and some of you may be watching, episode 142 of our podcast on Tuesday, December the 9th, 2008. Hello there, Rodney. Hi, how's it Anna? I'm very pleased to have Rodney Hull join me again this week to um, fill in for Ian Hull. Um, we're very pleased to have you and thank you for joining us, Rodney. Thank you very much for having me. What I thought we might do a little bit today, since we have you sort of here in the hot seat, is to get your thoughts on, and, and I know we've talked a lot in the past about capacity litigation and this whole gray zone as to whether or not someone is capable or incapable and what happens if they're no longer capable. And so I thought having you here, we'd have the opportunity to maybe talk a little bit about the change in the law since when you started practicing back in 1957, and we still called it like a committee ship, and how things may have changed since 1994 when the new Substitute Decisions Act came into place. Yes, well, in, in, in the uh, pre-1994 legislation, uh, the first dis distinction was that uh, uh, they changed the, 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 the fiduciary, the, the name of the fiduciary from a committee to what it is today, which is the um, guardian. Gu guardian. Right. And uh, basically, though, the function of the guardian is the same today as it was then. Uh, there is a far superior uh, structure uh, created by the new uh, Substitute Decisions Act, which gives a great deal more guidance to persons involved in committee ships, as we used to call them. Uh, before, you simply applied. You had, we did the same thing. We had psychiatrists, and one would say this, and one would say that. We would have doctors, we would have bankers, we would have people, uh, investment people, saying what, it, what their opinion was. Mm -hmm. And a committee was appointed for the person, if it could be shown that the person was not capable of managing his or her affairs. Uh, now it's exactly the same, but we have guidelines, much more direct, uh, clear guidelines as to wh wh who we use, what we're doing, we have referees, we have uh, uh, persons who uh, are, are, are directed to make decisions as to whether or not there's the capacity to manage your own affairs. Uh, that's clear, it's, it, they've been set out. Uh, before it was, uh, uh, by guess and by God, uh, the judge would listen to the evidence and it would be the judge that, that made the determination. Um, not a very satisfactory way of doing it, not because the judges weren't every bit as good as then as they are, they are now or, 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 or had, had, had less ability. It's just that uh, there is a, a scientific aspect to the appointment of guardians that I think we didn't realize as much then as we do now. And that uh, it isn't basically a, a, simply a judicial function. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, it's, it's a function that involves almost all the aspects that one would put into ordinary daily living concepts. Right. And you say that comes about because of the clearer definition that's set out in our statute now. That is correct. Yes, I think so. I think it, it gives us great guidance. It, uh, it makes clear what we should be doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the procedure is far, far more closely defined. Uh, before it was, as I say, by guess and by God, you know, mm -hmm. got an application to have an committee appointed and, uh, under the Act, and uh, and of course the the children's lawyer would sometimes be involved, and the public guardian and trustee was involved, as mm -hmm. they are today. That's right, yeah. <laughs> and now that's certainly from the financial perspective, so when we're appointing someone to manage property, but how would you say, if at all, it's changed in terms of having someone appointed for personal care? That, of course, is probably uh, the most difficult aspect to try and deal with. Yeah. Uh, y you know, you <laughs> there are some people you don't want to have the ability to pull the plug on you. <laughs> uh, that's for certain. And, and uh, uh, we can all figure out who some of them are. Mm -hmm. uh, but basically, uh, I think the ones that are nearest to dear and dearest to you are the ones that should have that decision. Mm -hmm. uh, there is uh, 
nothing worse in my mind than having a no direction really, no written direction, but to have a gathering of six or seven people around and uh, there you are with a, uh, one of these breathing devices in you, you hate it, your arms are tethered, you can't tear it out, uh, and uh, there are sitting around the table uh, arguing whether or not it should be pulled out. Uh, we want dad or mom or auntie so-and-so to have every chance to live and come back even though the doctors say uh, he or she is going to be a vegetable. Mm -hmm. That's not good. No. And to have, but to be able to show the, 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 the directing people that you have the authority to do it I think is very important. Clothing that person or finding that person is where the rubber hits the road. <laughs> it's so true and you know I wonder from your experience like I know certainly judges are reluctant these days to make those kinds of decisions because those are such personal decisions that they don't necessarily feel qualified in many cases to make that kind of a determination. Was it any different under the prior legislation? Oh I don't. Uh, I think myself that there was no clear authority to do it. Mm -hmm. The doctors looked after it pretty well, That's true. Uh, but everybody's become very conscious of taking on any, any responsibility that uh, might involve you with uh, uh, bad feelings between people and, and uh, I think that basically is how it was done. It was just done by guess and by God and uh, uh, sometimes the uh, oxygen didn't get through. That's all. Sorry about that. It just, it really seems to underscore to me anyways, the importance of this planning, of planning during your lifetime, of telling people what it is you want and why it is you want it, so that when these tough decisions have to be made, then, you know, at least you've got some guideposts. You really don't have to be too clear as to what you want. Uh, you don't want to be going through a lifetime of pain and suffering mm -hmm. and, and, and stuck with one of those things and your head back, uh, backed up and the, the pump going and uh, you're there, you're not conscious. Uh, you don't have to be a Rhodes Scholar to figure that person doesn't want to hang around very long. That's for sure. You know. So just in terms some of some advice, Rodney, what would you say to people who are dealing with individuals who are sort of in this gray zone where we're just not sure if they are fully cognizant and capable or maybe they're on the cusp of no longer having capacity? Any thoughts or any guidance for us in terms of dealing with those kinds of individuals? Well, I guess kindness is the is the, <laughs> the only word that really comes unbidden to the lips. Uh, uh, it's uh, it's a very difficult uh, uh, responsibility to take on, and it's a very difficult responsibility to pass on. Mm -hmm. So uh, it just has to be guided by common sense, and as I say, kindness probably. Yeah. Well, thank you very, very much, Rodney. It was a pleasure having the opportunity to podcast with you again and to seek some of your thoughts and guidance to us. So thank you for joining us. Thank you, Susanna, for having me. And just a quick reminder to everyone to feel free to provide us with any comments, any feedback at hullandhull at gmail.com or feel free to visit our blog at estatelaw.hullandhull.com. You have been listening to Holland Estates and Succession Planning by Ian Hull and Susanna Popovic Montag. The podcast you have been listening to has been provided as an information service. It is a summary of current issues in estates and estate planning. It is not legal advice, and you are reminded to always speak with a legal professional regarding your specific circumstance. To listen to other Hull and Hull podcasts or to leave any questions or comments, please visit our website at hullestatemediation.com.